How you doing? Hope you're all staying well and um, enjoying time with your family. However, I know that during this pretty challenging period, when you're all cooped up, when your feathers have been ruffled because all the little routines that you were used to, that you and your family members were used to, uh, are a bit disrupted, this can be a time where maybe there can be some tension or some conflict between you and your son or daughter. So I was thinking about you today and I wanted to speak into that a bit. There are a lot of different ideas to that are very valuable to discuss around what causes tension and conflict. But I wanted to focus on one today, but I'm going to ask you a question. It's going to be a strange question. Here it is. Do you want your son or daughter to individuate? That's a weird question, isn't it? Because it's a little bit psycho babblish. You know, individuation is just kind of a, I guess you could say a little bit of a textbook word that in psychology we use to talk about how as human beings we're, we're evolving, if you will, we're growing up, we're um, becoming our own person, becoming our own person. I'm going to ask you, you know, what's, what's the point of parenting? What's the point of you as a parent? It's not the point of you as a parent to help your son and daughter become independent and to enjoy all that life has to offer and to realize their potential. But even in the parent-teen relationship, it's, it's very unique, isn't it? Because as parents, we pour all of ourselves into our sons and daughters to create this person who's on this path of individuation, becoming their own person become independent, which means that they're going to separate from us. So we pour, pour ourselves all into this relationship, knowing ultimately that there will be what we want to call is a liberation, that they're free to go out into the world and enjoy what the world has to offer and live their own lives. So yes, I would say that it's in the heart of every parent, as I've said many a time, both when I counsel people and when I do my parent leadership group, that it is in the heart of every mom and dad. We want our sons and daughters to grow up to become their own man or their own woman. Their own man or their own woman. And of course, even though each of us has that as a desire on our own hearts, it's not easy, is it? Sometimes I wonder what makes it challenging, what can make it difficult, what can make it a time of tension and conflict. And so I wanted to share with you a little bit about that. What is individuation and how do, what is the process for it? Well, first of all, imagine when our kids are little, because a lot of parents, when they're experiencing tension and conflict with their teen, what they say is, oh my gosh, what happened? Little little Julie or little Bobby used to be so good when they were little, then all of a sudden they turned 12, they turned 13, they started to go to high school. What went wrong? I just wish that we could go back. I just wish that they could be like they used to be. And so parents often, when they hit this point of tension and conflict, they want to try to turn the clock back. They want to try to get their kids, to, you know, they're asking me, you know, what can I do to get them to be like they used to be? What do you mean? You know, I'm thinking to myself, what do you mean how they used to be? Well, you know, I try to give, you know, parent will say, I try to give, you know, my advice, my counsel, you know, and they just don't want to listen. They think I'm an idiot or whatever it is. They don't want to listen. I say, okay, well, what you're really saying then is that you'd like to turn the clock back to a time when your kids listen to you. Right? Because it was easier then. It was less stressful. Well, yeah, you know, it'd be less stressful for them too. You know, everything would go easier. But I, you know, I, w I might be saying to them or thinking in my own mind, but I thought you wanted your son or daughter to become independent, to learn how to stand on their own two feet. Because here's how it's done. Like, you think about it. When our kids are little, imagine that we buy our kids a bike. Our kids are maybe three, five, whatever, six years old. Their first bike. They don't know how to ride it. So what do we do? We put training wheels on it. 
Training wheels are great because it helps stabilize the bike. They don't hurt themselves, right? But, but we also know that you can't have the maximum amount of fun on a bike that's got training wheels on it. You can't really get the maximum amount of entertainment and joy out of it. And so we know that, that at some point the training wheels have to come off. And when the training wheels come off, what's that like, parents? It's anxiety producing, isn't it? Oh my gosh, you know. And so what we do is we run along with the bike and we hang onto the back seat or whatever and try to help stabilize it. But there comes a time when the child is moving too fast and we have to let go. And that's where we see, you know, kind of if they can handle the challenge. If they can do it themselves, if they have the skill and capacity to do it themselves. But there becomes a time when we have to let go so our children can take that step towards enjoying what life has to offer more fully. Some parents don't want to let go. Can you imagine a parent who, you know, I mean, here, here this parent is running as fast as they can, trying to stabilize this bike, hanging onto the back seat, and they start to get tired and they start to get stressed out and they start to slow down, but they're still hanging onto the back seat of the bike. What would happen? Well, the bike would start to slow down. And what would happen to the child? The child would probably turn around and go, hey, what are you doing? It would start to frustrate the child. The parent hanging on to the bike would become a source of irritation. Before a child, a parent hanging on to the bike was a source of uh, confidence. You know, it was a source of encouragement. But if a parent hangs on to the bike too long, what happens? That parent becomes an irritation. And that's what happens when parents can't let go. Our kids grow, right? We're helping them build skill and capacity as they're growing up through their younger years. And then there comes a time when they're going to start to venture away a little bit farther, when they start to pick up speed, if you will, in life. And we have to be able to let go. Let go to do what? Well, you know, now all of a sudden, now we're out of control, right? As a parent, we can't control where the bike goes. We can't control where our kids, you know, for the most part, are going to make a left turn or a right turn. In other words, the decisions they make, they could, you know, accidentally steer the bike out into the street. They could run into a car. They could run into the side of the house. They could fall down. There's all sorts of things that could happen now. Consequences to the choices that they're making. Now, you know, I imagine, you know, if a, if a parent uh, wasn't, I guess you could say, okay with the child making some choices around where that bike is going to go, let's say the child steered its bike into the side of the house, and now the child's crying. One parent might go, well, I told you so. You shouldn't have done that. If you would have just told you, if, I, if you would have just followed what I told you to do, this wouldn't have happened. And then another parent would go, "Oh, what happened? Well, oh, that's interesting. Oh, you, you know, you weren't paying attention, or or what have you? Tell me more about that. Child's crying, and then what? Two different approaches to the situation. In other words, our children are going to make choices, and they're going to experience consequences. Some parents are going to let their emotions get the best of them, and say things that are undermining such as i told you so you shouldn't have done that next time you know uh do what i tell you to do so this parent is getting impatient and intolerant and frustrated another parent is going yeah i get it you took a right you should have taken a left what are you going to do next time oh you're probably going to take a left okay sounds like a good idea now that child is making decisions for themselves that's how we become our own person. That's how we become our own man, our own woman. We exercise free will choice. We make choices in life. We experience consequences. And the adults around us, and especially our parents, need to remain calm. Need to have conversations with us. So I'm going to keep this short today, this video, because this, this is what individuation is, parents. It is a process that we can find comfort in because this process is one that is a reflection of our heart's desire. We all want our sons and daughters to become their own man or their own woman to become unique individuals. 
keeping our hand on the back of the bike, you know, slowing our kids down, consequently, becomes a source of irritation. And then when we get irritated, they get irritated at us, we get irritated back, and then all of a sudden we start to try to tell them what to do. We want them to obey. You don't want obedience from your son or daughter without question. You don't want obedience without question. That's slavery. Parent, you're a liberator. You want your son and daughter to become free, to become their own individual, not to become a carbon copy of you. What you want then is respect. What is respect? Respect means to look again, to look again, to show consideration for. What you want is consideration. In order, for, in order to get consideration, you've got to be remain calm and you've got to have a discussion. So discipline then for a teenager is not going to be a lecture or not going to be telling them what to do, but it's going to be a discussion closer to what we would have with another adult. We don't tell adults what to do. We don't tell adults to obey. None of us like being told what to do. Do you like being told what to do? Probably not. Right? And the older you get, the less you like it. So, it's all about conversations now. Not, not telling people what to do, but really who you're going to be for them. So in this time when you guys are all kind of cooped up in your house. Remember this, this idea here. You're all about liberation, parents. You want your son and daughter to become their own man or their own woman. Be careful to not be an irritant. Don't become irritating by hanging on to the back of that seat. Let children, when I say children, I mean, you know, those, those kids that are, you know, pre-adolescent, adolescent and beyond, uh, make some of their choices and learn from those choices. But you remain calm and clear-headed. That way you maintain the relationship. You don't lose the relationship. You don't damage the relationship. It's not easy to do. We know that. But it is the truth. And it is, it is your truth. It's the truth that's in your heart. As a parent, as I was saying, all parents want their kids not to be a carbon copy of them, but to go farther than they've gone. So I'll leave it there for now. There's there's some really great conversations to have around this, and I hope that someday you'll join us at the Parent Leadership Group every Tuesday night. If you'd like to know more, just send me a message. Take care. Bye.